the pass that he made for Kukureya before that it should have been a goal earlier. That was like a better pass. He shouldn't be allowed to referee a Delphi game. And then in general, he shouldn't be allowed to referee in any Premier League game or any game at all. Like. All right, Aram, are you ready for your... I wish this was different, man. I wish uh, Bournemouth had scored the pen. This Today would have been much I wish, different. But... I wish I knew you told me you would pull up this graphic. I would have brought a balloon. I would have brought a balloon. Just for the theatre. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that looks. Uh, did he get the balloon with himself? How does what is happening here? Does that include go carry balloons he in his pocket? The, or? And not in his pocket. It's in his like a sock. Oh, it's in his sock, and then he, he keeps just it blows for, it. Yeah, yeah, he keeps it for his son. Like he loves balloons, so he does the celebration cute. for his son. Yeah, I like cute. it. I like the celebration. The very innovative. Yeah, it's cool. But coming on to the win, the win was very scrappy. I know you were doing the research and so were the United fans. Game turned out really well for you guys, but like not really happy with the way we won, but. Three points or three points at the end of the day. It was yeah, yeah. more to do with the international break, not having any fit midfielders or right back. So I know it, I knew it would be a tough ground. Like the Vitality Stadium isn't really a very easy ground to play at. But then again, with no proper full having a midfield like Rosado was our only fit holding midfielder like or midfield. So this dude, which is Kata Fury region, Renato Vega. He played in the midfield, but talk about Roberto Sanchez, man. What a performance. Him and Sancho were uh, like... He's now a starter no. this season, 100%. <laughs> I mean, he already is. And yeah, unless he drops like two to three stinkers consecutively, or if he gets injured, I don't think Jorgensen gets into the first team in Premier League, but he is like the starting goalkeeper in the Conference League. So I think it's good to have for like the tournament playing in the Conference League this season. Like we can have two different opponents for the tournament and get confidence for the players. But let's just talk about the game man, because I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get on that. The next... good, but... Yeah. Let's yeah. get on to let's get on to that. Uh, uh, I have Vamsi's notes from yesterday. He pulled up a, a, a notebook and he wrote uh, right before the game, Sancho mistakes, minute and mistakes. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to fill anything up. I'm see thoughts on how your... Happy, I, okay. how happy the dude is at his boyhood club, like the club he adored. He was Malasco from, uh, from the city days, man. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think he made the meant, most I think that, ordinary I think, pass to Nkunku, by the way. I think also, like, coming back to the statement, it's very misunderstood. Like, he didn't say he knew Malasco from... From like in person, he knew that Maraska was at City and that like everyone watches City, yeah, right? Don't, don't so, say that. Don't was... say that. He said from my time at City. He said that. Yeah. No, no, no. He didn't say that from my time at City. I, he, he said, said that I know Maraska from his time at City. You need to put up the statement, man. But from anyways, like, man of the hour, Jaden Sancho. <laughs> Dude, he like, made the most ordinary pass, Aram. Do you think no other player could make that pass to Enkunko? That goal was all Enkunko, by the way. The bro, three people on him got a finish. It isn't, but. It isn't even about the assist, man. The entire performance. Nirav was watching the game, so if you don't want to take my word, like, he was the game changer the way he was. I mean, I could be hyping him a bit too much from Modric PTSD, but uh, so Nirav could have, like, a double stake. He couldn't be as bad as man, but he changed the game, man. When he came in from the left, I think he... He did. He was, he was he sparking. Won, he had, he, he was sparking. tracking. He was tracking back. He won the ball one or two times. He was making, like, linking up with the other players. I think the pass that he made for Kukureya before that it should have been a goal earlier that was like a better pass than this one and the way just he was linked up the effort he was everywhere and that was what I liked about him not being a very good off the ball he was like doing everything that you would want a modern Dervinga to do but again, like I mentioned in our group chat yesterday, the issue with Sancho always has been consistency. So let's see if he lives up to that. But yeah. the performance he, yesterday he, was top. I think top. he runs on adrenaline and dopamine. And uh, I think just making a debut for Chelsea probably was that. And when the shit gets going, like Pompsi can describe better, bro. Do you, do, you, do you think it was a mistake letting Sancho go for that cheap? No, dude. I, you know, in a flip side, I feel like they're going to finish oh, above 14 and he's going to be back at United. That's what I feel. They're going to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing United, I know this is going to happen, right? No, no, no. Okay, important. what is what is considered a good season for Jadon Sancho? Aram, in your in your Chelsea expectation, the GA like forget changing matches, whatever. What's a good output at the end of the season if you were to keep Sancho? That's a starting. I think, for, I think a better metric would be if he becomes the starting 
like the first name into the lineup that this is the guy that would start like in for Chelsea in Premier League I think if it comes to that point that he is the go to guy then we'll find him if he is the guy that and then obviously there's an if obligation for so not in like in, even even coming on if he solves some problems then that is that's good enough right for 25 the biggest million. thing is that he helps us cut yeah he helps us cut the losses on Modric like if he nails that spot for him that would be like in general great for Chelsea and great for him as well because and I think right now um he has everything to lose so he has to perform like right at united he had this excuse that oh the culture is and everything's not working and this is the this is the move that he wanted this is when he is being played where he wants uh, so this is his time to shine like and i think he would thrive of that you know everybody talks about his how ten how treated him he was not even ten max in a tbh he's played before ten up like he's played a lot of games before ten was there and the best moment was against i mean i will remember that against liverpool where bruno is showing where he has to score right i think that's the best moment i have seen jaden sancho in the premier league i can't count two or three more uh, and that that's a problem because he's played over 100 like about 100 games you should watch yesterday's game that was his best in the premier league game. i think you would need to watch the game to agree with me on that but i think you will well i mean okay, time okay, okay like so... expectation wise just you're saying like he has to nail down a starting spot and pedro neto by default means he won't start on the left wing right like I think Pedro I mean, Neto's Sancho, uh, natural can... position is right wing. I think Noni. I think Noni would drop down if Sancho nails that spot. Neto would take the right wing, and the Mandem drops. How does the Mandem drop, bro? The Mandem drops, then the whole Mandem drops, bro. Like, I think we can't be having that. Man's not hot. I think. <laughs> I think I think he is a good player and especially last season in the Porto you know his work rate really improved the game good for the team and he has shown that uh, it this season but I think again we have Estevão Gilian coming in can do back them I think them will be happy about Nani so I wouldn't be surprised if Nani split for some profit come at the next season where it's very interesting there has been a lot of Premier League interest if we can get like to maybe yeah, for him next season I think Chelsea would have Yeah, uh, time will tell, bro. If it was a mistake to let Sancho go, or if uh, uh, I mean, if it's a really good buy because the price is really good and the player has potential, so we we'll see. Next, next meme. This is uh, purely for Arham, bro. Uh, what is the scene with Anthony Taylor and Chelsea, bro? Can you please explain to us? How do I even start, man? Like this guy, I don't want to ask him, but this guy. Nothing other than the effort for him. Like he's a disgrace to football in general and against Chelsea. I don't know what his agenda is and where it started. But then he was a boy for Arsenal. He be a drug bar. The other day, like shitting on him in front. I don't know what his issue was. So he you couldn't be allowed like, to. Can, can, can you not bring Arsenal in every single time and every single thing? I'm just like uh, saying for. For just to make a point, like I think I don't know what the issue is. I don't know why he's there, but he shouldn't be allowed to referee a Chelsea game, and then in general he shouldn't be allowed to referee in any Premier League game or any game at all. Like not even in Championship mode. If you watch yesterday's game, this guy I don't know what he was doing. Like, this. have you ever seen both the managers like saying we don't want to make a comment about that? Like, I honestly at this point don't know whether he's just a terrible referee in general or does he do that only in Chelsea games? Because I haven't seen him. A lot in non-Chelsea games, so I wouldn't make that statement. But dude has been like hilarious in our games, and I was bringing Arsenal in because his worst performance by far against us was, I think it was the FA Cup final when he was awarding you guys penalty for nothing, and then wasn't giving penalty in the other box, and then giving yeah, cards for the good cover for winning the ball, uh, gave a red card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I do remember that. I do remember that. But we won the FA Cup for that, so we don't care. And uh, I've been up. Obviously, have you guys like, faced the wrath of? Anthony Taylor in one of your team games. Or do dude, you have any that, other referees? Dude, Abhinav, I want to say something. That United game, the United Liverpool game. Every oh. time Casemiro wanted to play a pass, <laughs> like Anthony Taylor, I, I, Nirav, I've been telling you this like over and over, right? We, yeah, we shouldn't have a non-playing uh, person on the football field because the play, the spaces are too tight already. Everyone wants to play a high line, especially the top teams. If there is no space in that midfield, why do you need a non-playing guy? We are the only sport that allows it. American football doesn't allow it. Rugby doesn't allow it. Basketball doesn't allow it. 
<laughs> I mean, they are on the opposite side. I don't know why these guys in the middle of everything. So, still a prop brand for it, but VAR is not helping itself. With whatever VAR, VAR is doing. But this season, I've seen referees be too trigger happy in every game. Uh, especially with the whole re- rule changes that only the captain should come. The whole restart delays, which is ridiculous. Rice got it. I saw Saliba got the yellow today. Uh, exactly. And if if Rice got the yellow for hindering the restart, why didn't suppose I get red, a red card? I'm saying this as a Liverpool. fan right why didn't suppose like a red card yesterday especially when he was blocking the play and that was more why didn't Jao Pedro get against yeah. Arsenal he kicked it ball away like somewhere there was some really yeah, exactly. incredible ass reason which no, didn't, I think answered, didn't make any sense even yesterday like I, I just saw that we Colvin won the ball and he was like okay you won the ball you know giving on to the Chelsea player yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he made I think they, I, they, he, he, bro- I, he broke his He broke his own record like yesterday. Like, oh, I'm going to break my own record of the most yellow card in the game. So that. Yeah, I, you know how police, you know how policemen and traffic police have these things that you have to reach a certain level of uh, traffic fines that you have to give in order to like get this much yeah. amount of money or whatever. I think referees have that for yellow cards. So uh, that's why today, today racked up so many yellow cards. It's just yellow cards are like a fun thing now to give. Easy for any any small yeah. little inconvenience, you will give a yellow card. Makes makes life exciting in the Premier League because anyway, the robot in AI has made life boring. Why not? Like, But they will never give Man City Man City yellow cards. Yes, today. Yes. Yesterday, when we had to waste time at the end, I had a paper. So I was thinking, like, which player can waste time and get a yellow card now? Because everyone was on the pitch was already on a yellow, so they were like the two or three subs that didn't have. Wasting time against Bournemouth. Not looking good, bro, for you. I have really said it was a scrappy win, man. Uh, <laughs> okay, going to Chelsea fans' favorite topics. Yeah. I want. I want. Do you think, like, after how much pressure there was on referees last season, that this season they're like, we're gonna, we're gonna like put the players like on skates? So that there's not that much pressure on the referees anymore. I feel like they're trying to control the game more, and that's why all this stuff is but, happening. But so, that that is going to go against their entire principle of the free flow. Them. Yeah, the the free flowing game or, or or that bullshit that they say, right? I think they wanted the reason why they didn't want VR in the first place was because it was interrupting the flow of the game, and they wanted to be because they thought we are the ones who are protecting the integrity and the and the beautifulness of football by not interrupting so much. But if they are being so restrictive. and they are going to keep 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 keep, keep giving 14 yellow cards in one game how are they kind of even controlling the game so i think they are just basically making up these rule changes and they're complicating it them for themselves i mean they are just not helping themselves at all yeah i mean this is what happens when you have non football players trying to officiate a football game yep so everything becomes subjective mm-hmm. all right moving on for sure. uh, adam this is for you uh, your favorite chelsea topic uh, boli versus ekbali which which side are you on bro are you, are you team boli or are you team ekbali i don't think i have made up your mind yet i don't think i'm on any side of this spectrum i think it does no i haven't made up my mind yet and i think like it isn't good for the club especially the public pr work that both the guys are going in they don't look good for the club they don't like them being very honest to their work if, even if they have these issues they need to sort these out back door and there would should just be one statement like whatever however way it ends so the public but PR work I think fun, right? it shouldn't happen in the first place the rival fans are having it's not fun, fun man it's not fun uh, right now they're just like it is a lot of fun for the rival fans but it's amazing it's hilarious even it's between the fan because... base like I would tell you like their yeah, opinions are shaping up someone wants Bolly someone wants and Bolly like me at this point I just want a bit of stability like I don't even get transfer dopamine anymore like Like, would you believe that? <laughs> it's it's hilarious how I get how, for uh, dopamine Chelsea when is... we sell a player. <laughs> when we sell a player. <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, when, when, uh, when, when, <laughs> when the when the Gallagher deal like stalled, I was like saying like I should ride that player and leave him to Atletico Madrid at this point. <laughs> That's funny. Um, So Chelsea uh, have been like, like um, great dude. The the two the two owners have been separately feeding parts of the media. Like uh, I think uh, uh, someone's feeding someone, someone's feeding someone information, and they're trying to like uh, 
So this the did funny you, thing is like this the 443 the 443 formation yeah. was so actually I'm, at Bali Yeah yeah that's what I'm thinking like I, I, because uh, it, like earlier when this thing came out uh Uh, let me just read out a team for there are some doubts on the bowli side as to whether igwali carries enough football knowledge to be such a pivotal figure um he was pitching tactics to thomas tuchel using a novel 443 formation um they i mean earlier we thought that bowli was the person who was doing this but it turns out now that igwali but this could also be a bowli brief right so um clearly essentially people are thinking don't know much about football So yeah, Chelsea is funny. They just keep on giving. I, I hope they keep on giving this whole season something interesting or the other. Uh, and my hot take that uh, Bolly is going to uninvest comes true. That would be that would be amazing. That would be fun. Um, yeah, I feel like he's just yeah, going to go, go invest in Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that would be the game like of the story. That either one of the parties would get a handsome sum so that they can go and invest some stuff. Big yeah, the the last line is amazing. And Chelsea point blank deny it even ever happened. Yet it made a pretty significant impact on Tuchel, who was surely not hallucinating what he saw and heard. <laughs> <laughs> who knows, man? Tuchel is right now in Kerala doing meditation. Maybe, maybe he's doing natural hallucination. 